This is ABC Invoice and Inventory Manager. It's an application you can use as it is. It allows you to keep track of company invoices, all the line items that are associated with a particular invoice. Many of those line items have uh, multiple parts and some of them have products which have subparts. And how do you keep track of those things uh, with the inventory that you've got and uh, how you can manage those types of things is the focus of this application. So have, is it, have it as you will. Um, let's take a look at the diagram, um, relationship diagram over here. This is a good way to start to see how the flow of information is in any application. I encourage people to use this because it helps get your head on straight as to how things are working. But you can see over here a company can have many, and that's that arrow, many invoices. And an invoice might have many line items. And inside that line item, there may be many parts that are selected back and forth and back and forth. Uh, individual parts, for instance. But you might also be pulling in a product. If you make a product, you're selecting a line item that has a product. We need to be able to update many parts without having to select the nitty gritty of the individual components, subcomponents. So how do we do that? We have these two tables here, product and product part selections, and these are like a template. Uh, let's say that you've got a widget and it's got three parts. This widget has and selects this little component from the inventory, another little component, another li little component. Pretty soon you've got a whole bunch of nuts, bolts, screws that make up this product right here. One item. You select one item, you get all those parts. Well, when you're adding individual parts down below here, that can get to be pretty tedious because you got to remember every product and add each piece, but this um, addresses that. So let's go take a look at what it looks like and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the magic that makes that happen. Let's take a look at uh, all, all these invoices. We've got one right here. Let's view it. So, and it has um, bunches of line items here. You can see some individual components, miscellaneous pieces that have been added, but also there's a one product, which is a premier product that has been added. If we add a line item, um, we're going to add a, an individual item first. So let's uh, come down here and click on add a part. And it will be for, I don't know, we'll select the very first thing, the extended express um, support item. How many of these do we want? We only want one of these. And then we'll save this. So we come back to this and we see that one item has been added um, to this, one individual part. Now, truth be told, we can add additional pieces this way too. This is the grid edit fashion. And we can tab over and say we need uh, five of these. And it goes on and on and on. But we're going to save this. That's the way that we're, we've been adding these two miscellaneous pieces um, back up to this invoice. So let's go back to the invoice and you'll see that those miscellaneous pieces have been added right down in here. Okay, now let's add a product called Essentials. Uh, we're going to add a line item. And this time, rather than individual pieces, what we're doing is we're going to add Essentials. And let's say we need 10 of these. Well, each one of these might have multiple parts in them, and we're multiplying this number times all the individual numbers that have already been preordained to be the number and quantity for essentials, but let's add this anyway. And we're back, and look at the line items here. We've actually added all of the essential line items here, and it's multiplied the quantity that was already a part of the product by the total quantity of the products we've wanted. So. Um, let's talk about how all that magic happened. As we uh, remember, we had a separate uh, product table and a products part selection table. And this is what makes up our, our template, so to speak. Let's go over to products and you'll see, let's see essentials and view it. And it has already predefined the items that need to be called on and cloned whenever somebody makes a selection of a product. So there are actually, how do we get all this to happen? Well, I'm going to verbalize it through and then I'm going to show you the connections that made it happen. When I come down to a line item and I select essentials and I save that, what it does is there's an action that wakes up and comes up and tells me what the um, identity of this line item is, as well as what number of quantity has been chosen. 
If I look down into any one of these children, this information is then passed down into the children, and you can see 52 and 10 is common. And then once this has happened and this has changed, it's in essence advising it to tell the uh, line item that, okay, I'm going to link up all of these to this and I'm going to order 10 of these. Well, these have, uh, these have four components, so this will be 40, uh, this will be 20, this will be 10, and this will be 10 when we're all finished. So there's three actions. The first one goes from line items to add the products. The second one wakes up in products and tells the, the children of the uh, product part selections. And then the third one down in the product part selections wakes up and does all the pass on information down back into parts and creates it. Now, this individual part, and this is just one of them, knows, for instance, who the related inventory was. It is the item number one in the inventory, and you can see it here. And because we've been updated by what it is for the line item, that's this number over here, when it goes and arrives and creates these records here, because it knows these, they're connected together, and it debits the inventory, it adds it to the line item, and we've accomplished adding a whole bunch of detail to a line item by just calling it a product. So let's go back to the home page and I'll show you the three actions. Um, right here, action one, action two, and action three. If I hover over this because I've got this little item in my uh, browser, I can visually see this. It's called Hover Zoom and it's available in Chrome as, a, as an add-in. So hovering over pictures is great. So in this one, you can see that when the line item is added, I want, and the product does not contain miscellaneous, I want to edit and it uses the report link that we've created between the product and the line item. Um, and also copy the value that we know, the record ID of the line item, because we're going to uh, need that when we add the parts, and the quantity that we want. Then, once a change is made at the product level, it needs to go down and tell all the parts. And this is the second action that's triggered. And all three of these actions are triggered at once. The first one happens, which triggers the second, and the second one triggers the third, and that third one will do the actual adding of the items associated with the inventory and with the line item. So this one will update the parts, and then, of course, when the parts have been updated, it says, well, I want you to go down and add those uh, individual pieces to that line item. So those three are here. Now they exist in this application, but they get neutralized when you copy it out of the exchange. So they're there so you can replicate that information uh, when you actually use the application. Hopefully you have a blast with it. Let us know uh, what you think of it and if you have any questions. Thanks.